Hi y'all, uh, welcome back to the Red Rooster Kitchen. We're gonna do something a little bit different today and I hope you like it. Actually, two o'clock in the afternoon and this is my first meal for the day. Um, now normally I eat a couple hours earlier than this for my first meal of the day, but every once in a while, um, I'm just not hungry. And uh, one thing that I learned from uh, Dr. Barry Nisha and even Dr. Eric Berg is um, eat when you're hungry. Uh, you don't have to follow uh, eat at 7 o'clock noon and 5 o'clock because it's supper time. Um, eat when you're hungry. And if you're not hungry, don't eat. So that's kind of what we thought have followed um, pretty much the whole time. So anyway, here it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm going to have my first meal for the day. What I'm having is, I have one egg yolk that I fried and I only have one because I'm out of eggs. Gotta get some more eggs now. I've got it topped with a, maybe a tablespoon of pico de gallo, just because I like that, and some salt and pepper. I have two slices of, or two pieces of sausage, um, probably about an ounce each. And then I have a half of an avocado sliced, uh, just with some salt and pepper and that's how i like it and then i have just a little bit maybe maybe a half a cup of uh sugar-free whip heavy whipping cream this has zero carbs uh with some blueberries i would have had some uh strawberries in that or some raspberries um but i'm out of those so anyway um gonna have a little bit of that uh this afternoon and then I'm drinking the, uh, I think this is the uh, Kiwi Strawberry uh, Mile in uh, this bottle of club soda. And it'll take me all day to drink this. I have some electrolytes added to it. And so I'll just be sipping on this um, throughout the day. But anyway, I'm gonna eat this really quick. And this video is gonna be a little bit different today. So, um, I had somebody ask me to do something, so I'm gonna to try to do that today. So anyway, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, y'all, we're back. And I'm gonna do something just a little bit different just because um, someone asked me to, and that someone was or is Lori Brown from Whipper Will Holler. And I've told you about her channel before. Um, I think maybe it was in the live, I can't remember. But anyway, um, she is uh, somebody I started watching not long after we moved. Uh, we live in Pocahontas, Arkansas. Not long after we moved up here, we were in an, an apartment downtown, which was a really cool place to live. Uh, while we built our house. Um, <clears throat> we moved into this house last October. We finally got finished uh, just in time to get moved in and get ready for uh, just fall and, and the holiday seasons. But anyway, um, when I, I, we built this house, I had certain ideas and things that I wanted to do. And so uh, certain, I made certain choices uh, for that reason. Now, I like old houses. Uh, my husband, he wanted to do a new house just because uh, his job schedule and, and things going on, he wasn't gonna have a lot of time to work on a home uh, if we purchased a old one. Um, so anyway, this is was our decision and what we decided to do, but I said, okay, new home, but I'm gonna fill it full of the old stuff that I love. So. Uh, anyway, uh, one of my uh, very good uh, YouTuber friends and somebody that I am just actually in awe of and um, have watched her, um, I've seen every video she's got and she's got a lot of them out there, her, her husband on Whipper Will Holler. If you haven't uh, looked at that channel or watched any of their videos, uh, you're missing out. You need to go do that. Um, for all kinds of reasons. Uh, there's all kinds of content that uh, there's going to be something there for everyone and something that you'll just love and just the most peaceful, calm, uh, 
kind, um, all kinds of information, especially uh, for homesteaders or people who want to do things like that, uh, and just the way they live and where they, it's just, it's just amazing. You'll, you'll love it. But anyway, um, she has encouraged me um, and, and really mentored me and kind of guided me on what I'm doing right now, and I have appreciated her so very much. I'm gonna try not to get emotional about it, but anyway, she just really has, and um, I really thank her for that encouragement. But anyway, on, I think it was the omelet video that we did, uh, setting at the table, um, she was one of the first to comment, and she just commented on how much she liked uh, the kitchen, and, and I believe in the video is the antique kitchen, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, that is what is in our heading in our videos that you see each time. But anyway, I was going to start out and show you, this is the modern kitchen. Um, I really wanted to put my vintage antique stuff in this kitchen, but uh, my husband really wanted to go ahead with modern appliances, so um, that's what we did. And so, but the other side of the dining room, I've turned it into my little mini vintage kitchen and um, I don't have my vintage refrigerator here e with me yet, but that will be coming sometime down the road and I've got a lot of plans for this. So anyway, this is the modern kitchen. Glad you can't see my dirty dishes because I do have some. Um, we really like it. Uh, I have a double stove. My granddaughter calls the bottom my oven and the top is her oven. <laughs> So, because she can reach that good. But anyway, that's not what you're here to see. So, uh, because she requested that, I am glad to do this for her. And again, I appreciate her so much. And so, anyway, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, y'all. Um, this is my little vintage uh, area of our uh, dining room, actually. And so... Anyway, I was going to give you just a, a long shot of all of it, and then I'll go back and um, I'm going to move the camera to where you can see things a little bit up close and just tell you about what I've collected. Okay, the easiest way for me to do this is to just carry the phone around and just kind of just show you my little vintage area of my kitchen. As you can see, this is the, the dining room and we have concrete floors. We went with just concrete. We may change that at some point. Right now, we're just, uh, we're just seeing how well we like this. Um, you can see my, uh, <laughs> my um, little dog leash is over there by the floor to let the dogs out. Um, my little granddaughter's uh, little Easter projects there on the side of my stove. <laughs> with magnets, so uh, that's where she wanted them, so that's where they go. Anyway, this is my antique stove. Um, I believe it's uh, what we could figure out between the maybe 1935 to 40. Uh, it is a universal electric. Haven't found out a whole lot about it. Just know that I absolutely love it and it was checked out by an electrician that said that everything on it works. We're just waiting for the electrician to come in and add the plug in the wall um, so that I can use it. Um, had I found this before we built the house or finished building the house, I would have had them add that in there at that time, but that's just how it worked out. Anyway, it's actually pretty beautiful. Um, I'll try to do a little close up here. I try not to make anybody sick. Um, it looks pretty good on the inside, I thought. Um, that roasting pan was my grandma's, and I have I use that. Uh, anything that I have that's uh, vintage or old, um, I don't just have it just to look at. I actually use them. So anyway, that's the little oven. The handle, everything is just in pristine condition. Uh, there is some marks down here on the base, but that's okay. I've got a little drawer here that I've got some of my mom's old uh, wedding cake pans in. Um, the things sitting on top are just 
some things I've collected. I love coffee, and so I collect coffee uh, percolators of all kinds. <laughs> my little grease, my little grease tin. Um, I found a little sifter the other day. A neighbor down the street was posting stuff on Facebook. So I was like down there three times uh, buying things from her. I have these little brackets that I don't have a shelf yet uh, to put on there, but that's in the works. Um, I've just got this little, I use this as a tablecloth. Um, I've got it hanging up there until I can find, looking for ladles and, and different antique um utensils that I can hang up there on the rod that's going across that. These are some dishes from a set that uh, my mother collected and had. And um, so I have a pretty hu huge set uh, left from her. And then we've added to that. I found a lady in Heber last year, I think, that uh, when we were still in the apartment that um, we added to that. I don't know if y'all can see this little thing up here. Let's see if I can grab it. This is one of those old cups. Let me see if I can. Okay, now I got it open. This is one of those old cups like my grandma used to carry in church and <laughs> to get a drink of water from the fountain. And I just love those. Now on this stove, let me move this. One. This also has the stew pot, bean pot. I don't know what they called it, but that's just what I call it. I used to have another stove like this that the bean pot, or what I call the bean pot, would raise up, and then the burner would lift up to make a fourth burner. This one does not. It stays stationary in the bottom, but that's okay. And I'm excited to get that uh, set up so I can use that. Okay. I'll just keep going here. This spoon and fork, I can't remember where I got that. Um, that little thing at the top with the pegs and the cardinal in the middle, that hung in my mom's kitchen for quite some time. And that's just always meant something to me. This little sign, or not sign, this round metal plate is a vintage Arkansas plate, and it actually has the town of Pocahontas and Searcy where we moved from. Um, that's another piece of the dishes that, uh, that is the uh, red apple Franciscan uh, dishes. Um, this right here is why, mainly why I named, or we named the channel, the Red Rooster Kitchen. My mom bought those for me uh, several years ago. I've had them probably nearly 20 years now. And when she first gave them to me, I thought, what am I gonna do with these red rooster and chicken? Uh, red is my favorite color. It was the color of our wedding. And so I just thought, okay, I love them. I've used them ever since. Uh, this little cookie jar, my little sister, my baby sister, Gina gave me that. That's a platter that goes with that set of dishes. Just recently I found this little, um, I don't know if it's a cookie jar or what it is, but I keep my keto snacks in. This little rooster pitcher, um, it was one that my in-laws had had for years. And um, so it's just a very special one also. A lot of the things that I have are things that were given to me by someone or left to me by someone or just was something that really meant a lot to me that belonged to somebody that we cared about. Um, we found this percolator recently and yes, we use it. We have used it. Uh, I do keep my coffee beans in this antique jar. Actually still has my mother-in-law's name on it. They used to use that, do pickles in it. Um, I found this old vintage Folgers coffee jar at the Old Hippie Antique Store in Searcy. I love that place. I've had this um, antique uh, coffee grinder with everything on it is original. I found that in Batesville probably about 10 or 15 years ago. Had a niece and nephew give me this sign. Oh, I can't tell you how many years ago. It's, it's been quite a few years now. Um, but that and the Red Roosters my mother gave me. Um, is why I named 
the kitchen, or not the kitchen, but the channel, what we've named it. And I'm gonna try and not make y'all dizzy with this video. The Hoosier cabinet, I found that in Judsonia. Uh, we had bought an old home there. Uh, it was built in 1937, and uh, we started working on that home, and I loved that home, and uh, I turned that kitchen um, into just the most darling kitchen, and I loved it. I, um, but we moved for my husband's work, so anyway, I brought the appliances with me. I have a 1949 Philco that is still in Cersei, uh, but I hope to get that up here soon. The uh, little metal top table I also found um, on a trip, one of our trips to St. Louis, I can't remember. The dining room table, it's, uh, it's well, it's old to me now. I raised, we raised our kids on this table and so that's special to me. It's got marks and dings and <laughs> bang ups and pieces missing off the chairs, but um, I love this table. Now, that being said, it's gonna be too big to do what I want to do in here. So probably gonna be um, replacing this table with something that's gonna be workable for me to cook from that kitchen once I get my stove set up. And one other thing, my brother bought me this little can opener. I don't know how well you can see that there, but it's um, it's a, uh, a vintage uh, can opener. And I'm not gonna open it right now because it's always hard for me to get it back where it needs to go. Um, then I have my little vintage, I like to collect uh, vintage aprons. One of them still has the price tag on it. I keep forgetting to get that off. But anyway, um, we did have a braided rug under this table. And I'll show you the one we have in the living room right now. And as you can see, I really need to do some more decorating. Got a lot of decorating to do. Um, both the dogs are sleep, asleep. We're dog sitting our uh, grand dog Emmett right now. And our little tiny dog, uh, Tilly, is sleeping on the footstool. Um, but anyway, we had a braided rug under this table, but we discovered it was a little bit too large. And during the ice and snowstorm we had, the back door was so close that we were getting the rug wet and dirty. So I chose to pull that up and we actually moved it to our bedroom and I love it in there. So I'm looking to replace that rug with something smaller and uh, that won't get too messed up. But anyway. Hey y'all, one other thing I didn't wanna leave out about uh, my little antique stove and kitchen. Uh, my little granddaughter, Chloe, has actually claimed this as her own. Uh, this, she calls this her kitchen because we bake together. Uh, it's been a while since we've done that, but we've done a lot of baking together. Um, and she calls this her kitchen because of the, she's five and the height, she can reach everything uh, really easy. The drawers are full of her things. Um, these have some of her things and I store a lot of my Christmas dishes down below right now. Uh, but when I got this stove in, she got really excited and she, she comes over and she looks at it and she'll talk about it pretty much almost every time she's here. Um, She'll look in the stove and she'll look at grandma's roasting pan. Um, now her uh, great, great grandmother's roasting pan. Uh, she'll open this and she'll show it to every anyone who's here uh, and listen to her. Um, and she told me the other day something really sweet. Um, she was over here going over it and talking about the stove and what all we were gonna do on it once we get the electric hooked up. And she said, Nana, when I get a granddaughter, then I'm gonna give this to her. Oh, <laughs> about brought tears to my eyes. So uh, just the fact that she has the love of baking and, and the love of vintage uh, and that uh, this little kitchen just really blessed my heart. So anyway, I didn't wanna leave that out. So hopefully she'll get to do a little spot in here with me a time or two um, once we get this up and going. So that's something that I look forward to. Just wanted to 
throw that in there. Yeah, one thing that I forgot to tell you about is this little wooden spinner. I don't even know what you call it, but it was my mother's, and I have shown you before um, her wedding cake pan. She did wedding cakes all the years that we were growing up, and she would use this to to spin and decorate her cakes and spread the icing. I know you, if you've watched anybody do cakes uh, on TV, you've seen them do that. They'll put it on a little table like that, and it'll just spin, and it makes it easier for them to put the icing on. She did many wedding cakes over the years, and so that's just a um, very special piece for me. Also, sitting above my fridge, I have this um, cute little old window pane that my little sister Gina painted um, lemons on, and I just really liked it, so I got that from her, and that uh, big tall ceramic goose um, was given to me by uh, my husband's Aunt Sharon several years ago, and that has just been a very meaningful piece to me. Uh, the black and polka dotted rooster was uh, my mother-in-law's, Shirley's, and that was that's a very special piece. And then the apple cookie jar was also uh, from my mother. And I just put those up there um, and enjoy those. Okay, the mixer I have, um, that was my mother-in-law's also, and um, it's just, it's just a, even though it's a newer item, it's just special to me. And then more of the Franciscan apple uh, collection that was my mother's. Some, a couple of those pieces are pieces I've added. And then also we have these cabinets put in um, to our modern kitchen. I know the light reflection's kind of messing with that, but um, these we had, these kind of cabinets we had in our apartment and I fell in love with them uh, for a place to display uh, more of my apple dishes and there's some uh, red um, Cape Cod Avon dishes that my mother collected and another uh, rooster and hen set. And then I have some on the other side too. Here's a little bit more of the collection. Uh, it's an apple trivet. Looks like with a teapot on it and the rest of the canister set and another little picture I use for utensils. And I bought this little red box from my neighbor just a few days ago and I'm gonna have Red Rooster Kitchen put on that at some point. And then the other side of the stove, or up above the stove, the matching cabinet that displays more of those dishes and the, other, the hen to that uh, rooster on the other side. So, that's the modern kitchen. And this little glass, I call it a trivet. I, I got that um, probably a couple years ago, maybe a little longer. I used to work at the Bible House. Uh, it's no longer the Bible House in Searcy, Arkansas anymore, but uh, I believe it's called the Bible Nook now. But anyway, I had worked there and this came in and I fell in love with it. So I bought that um, and I just love the scripture and just all the colors. Those uh, are the colors I use pretty much throughout my home. Um, this little uh, cookie jar my husband found for me at the flea market. Um, he knows I love animals and here in the city limits, I can't have them, so <laughs> I just collect ceramic animals. And a couple little platters that I've collected. I like to also collect platters. There you go. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that little segment on uh, our kitchen, the antique kitchen and the modern kitchen. Um, hope you like that. 
Anyway, um, I'm back here this evening and I'm going to make a keto version of Hamburger Helper. Um, I grew up eating that sometimes. I made it for my kids. I always liked Hamburger Helper. Some people don't. Um, but anyway, um, uh, the pasta in that is not keto and so anyway, I make my own. Uh, I've seen a few recipes on uh, Pinterest and looked at different ones, um, but tonight I'm just kind of throwing in my own little thing in there and so uh, a little seasoning that I found that I like, so that's what I'm going to go with. What I'm going to start with, I'm going to get this, okay, we're going to start with just a little bit of um, pepper and onion blend. Uh, it's just a yellow onions, red bell peppers, and green bell. Half a cup of those frozen vegetables that we're going to throw in here. And we're just going to saute them around a little bit. Just long enough to get them soft. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the ground beef in the same skillet. And I'm going to season these just a bit, not a lot. They're about where I want them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the ground beef in. What I'm, I'm using is uh, what I've used before, the market side butcher, never ever grass fed ground beef. And this is what we like. All right, I got that cut open and I'm just gonna, I just scooted over the vegetables and I'm gonna go ahead and put this packet in here. I think I cut it open good enough. I should have cut that a little bit bigger, but anyway, there it comes. All right, got that out there. Okay. This was a little bit frozen. I didn't get it completely thawed, but it won't take very long to start coming apart there. Okay, I'm going to turn that down just a little bit while it does that. Um... I'm going to go ahead and salt that a little bit. I'm not going to do a whole lot of salt and pepper just because the seasoning little packet that I'm going to put on it is really going to flavor it up. So I don't want to do too much. I'll add a little bit more at the end if I think that it needs. The is uh, cooking really good now. And I'm going to go ahead and add in the Goya seasoning. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to try to. It's this and it's really good. And I'm going to do the whole packet. I've used that before on, in different dishes and it's just really good to flavor stuff up. This would be really good and I don't know for some reason I just wanted something like a hamburger helper food tonight um just wanted something different so I looked in the fridge and the freezer and thought just for something easy and simple and something that you know if it's whatever's left over I could eat on tomorrow too if I wanted to Around here, we do that. If we have leftovers, we always eat our leftovers. When there is some. I grew up cooking big, or learning to cook uh, big, because we had a large family. And then after all of our kids got gone, I still cook the same, and most, for the most part, still do. Um, Except for the last year, I am learning to cook uh, a little bit smaller meals. It was only enough for me and Kurt for most of the time. Um, but every once in a while, we'll have some leftovers, but we always eat our leftovers. Some people don't, but we like to. Alright, I think that is good to go right now. So... Alright. 
Okay, now I'm just going to add in a 12 ounce bag of riced cauliflower. This is the Great Value brand again. I do use some other brands that already has seasonings in them and uh, vegetables that I'll just throw in the microwave. They're super easy to use and, and I'll be using those sometimes uh, in the video. I just didn't have any right now. This is what I have, so I'm going to throw this whole bag in there. just so you can see this up close and see that this is uh, mixing up really well and cooking down really well. Um, there's not a ton of green and red peppers in this. There's enough to really just, um, for, you know, uh, just the look of it. And it just really makes it look, look delicious. And, and you always want a little bit of color in your food that makes it appetizing. Um, like I said, the seasoning that I put in it was really all you would have to have. I just like the peppers in there. And to this, I'm going to, and you notice I didn't drain this because when I put this in there, that uh, cauliflower is gonna soak all that up. And so, and you want all those flavors. So I'm going to add in I've got six ounces of shredded cheddar cheese here. I'm only gonna add in a little at a time and get that mixed in. Ah, dropping it on my burner there, which I always tend to do a little bit. Okay. kind of start getting that incorporated enough that it'll just start melting down. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of it. That is six ounces of shredded cheddar cheese. We like sharp, so that's what I use. Once this gets uh, melted down a little bit here in a minute, I'm gonna add Probably, I think I have a fourth a cup of, uh, I'm using almond milk. Uh, you could use heavy whipping cream, and, and sometimes I do, but the almond milk has a little bit less carb count, so we're going to go with that tonight. I'm going to go ahead and add the almond milk. I've used this before in a video. It's the Unsweet Vanilla Silk uh, Almond Milk. It has one carb per cup. So we're adding one fourth of a cup. And I may end up adding a little bit more. I'll just see. Just see how creamy this gets. This is looking good, y'all. This is going to be something good and different. This will really be something good on a cold. Uh, really cold winter day, but you know, I like hamburger helper any time of the year, so I'm good with it. That looks really good and creamy, y'all. All right, y'all, I've added just a little bit of extra cheese on top of it, not enough to make any difference in it, but just for looks and, and sprinkle a little bit of parsley. I did go ahead and add a little bit of garlic powder because I tasted it and it just didn't seem like it had enough uh, of that. I didn't taste that. So I just added my own garlic powder to that. Uh, in these recipes, um, just add the seasonings that you like. Uh, you wouldn't have to use the Goya. You can use uh, your garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, chili powder, uh, just uh, Italian seasoning, um, oregano, just whatever uh, seasonings you like and and to the taste that you like. And 
salt and pepper and that'll work out just great. But anyway, um, that is my cauliflower hamburger helper casserole for tonight. And I'm gonna enjoy this and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, y'all, I'm ready to eat some cauliflower hamburger helper uh, tonight. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like and a share and subscribe to our channel and we will see you next time. Mm. <laughs>